going on everybody welcome to another edition of the movie fans horror review and i'm glad to be back in the lair this week last week went to the open grave concert fucking awesome and i want to thank open grave for you know, let me do the interview with them early on so thank you simon brian war machine and fathead and keep on rocking and uh also want to thank my neighbor robert cheney for uh you know help me conduct that interview you know, that's what I love about, you know, living in a cemetery. <laughs> you got a shitload of neighbors. I mean, just literally all around you. It's it's incredible. So, yes, but it is good to be back, and uh, we got a couple more movies for you tonight. We got Audition and Suspiria. Yes, do not own either one of them. More on that later. Uh, so, yeah, let's get this show started. I'm not going to lie, I got, like, massive fucking heartburn. Uh... Ah, last week sometime, I'm watching, um, it's a guy on this, uh, on YouTube, uh, oh, I don't know his real name, uh, Planet Beer Wagon is the channel name. I'm sure you guys know him, and the dude's got a brilliant fucking channel. But he does this thing called the, uh, Pop Clutter, and it's just like him and his friends sitting around like a round table, and just, you know, pop culture clutter shit, they're just riffing on it and shit. Anyway, there's a guy, and I've shut down my homework because I can't remember the dude's name. I, I can remember, like, faces. He's the guy who's always on this side of the, or to you guys. I, you know, I guess he's on this side. I don't know how you guys like, reverse, I guess. But anyways, as I'm watching the camera, he's over here on the screen. Anyways, uh, he was talking about watching, like, a bad movie. I think it was a Total Recall. And he, he mentioned something he calls the Tostino Sandwich, where he gets two Tostino's pizzas. And he cooks them, and then he just puts one on top of the other. And I'm like, that sounds fucking awesome. So, I'm watching a movie, and I'm like, you know what would be good? Tostino's Sandwich. And I, uh, so I did a little differently, because I also, I had a Tostino Sandwich. I had a Canadian bacon on one, and pepperoni on the other. And then I took, uh, like, nacho cheese dipped, and then I, I cut the sandwich into eights, and then took the little mini finger sandwiches, and then dipped it in the cheese. It was like crap cocaine. I mean, literally, like, my arm's going numb, and I can't really breathe as I'm eating it. But at the same time, like, this is fucking great. Oh. Uh, so, needless to say, though, I have massive fucking heartburn right now. It is ruthless. So, yes, that's what, I'm, that's what I like to do on my show. I just come on complain a little bit and then get on the show. So, yes, that's what we got. So, uh, let's kickstart this bitch, and let's do it. Now, uh, two weeks ago, the question of the week was... Uh, what is your favorite, your top three favorite death scenes in a movie? And uh, my boy, uh, 13th Wolfman, hit me up. He said uh, his top three was uh, the dude, the, the kid getting hung in the bathtub in uh, the first Final, De or, uh, sorry, Final Destination movie. Uh, gotta agree, that's a damn good death scene. Love it. Uh, dude, just the close up on his eyes and like when like it's choking him and like the blood fills his eyes. Dude, fucked up. Uh, his number two was uh, the woman that gets cut in half, and like both the dudes, like the hillbillies, walk off with both, you know, a half a piece uh, from Wrong Turn Two. Uh, was that dead end or left for dead or I can't remember the subtitle to the Wrong Turn, but a great movie and a really great death scene. Uh, but his number one, I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember. I seen the movie, I thought the movie was great. And yeah, I don't remember the scene. Uh, he said the decapitation scene in Wrong Turn 1. And I literally, I remember bits of one. Like, one's the one I've seen the least, and yeah, it's my favorite. Like, I don't know how it makes any sense, but I'm like, when I gotta rank the Wrong Turn movies, you know, I, I actually I rank them in order. I think they're, you know, one through four. And I like, you know, but I've only seen one, like, once, where I've seen, like, the middle two the most. Fourth one wasn't bad. I like the fourth one, the Bloody Beginnings. I thought it was all right. But uh, once again, you know, I just, you know, in order. I just remember the first one being really great, but I didn't, I don't watch it. I can't remember, I even on YouTube, almost like the decapitation scene and wrong turn, and I didn't, I couldn't find it at all. Hey, like everything else, they had, like the split in half scene and like the Bob Wire booby trap, and the, I think it's the third one where the dude gets wrapped up in Bob Wire and he's, you know, a great, great, you know, stuff, but yeah, I didn't see it. So yes, 13 Wolfman, thank you very much. Now, uh, I figured, you know, since we are doing a Suspiria is one of them, and I was like, you know what? Top three witch movies. Now, when I say, normally when I do these, I always kind of confine it to just horror movies. But I'll be honest with you, I can't think of too many horror movies with witches that I actually like. Like, it's very, and I'm sure I'm probably just blanking on a couple. I'm sure, you know, if I actually 
went on IMDb and just typed in like horror movie genre and then keyword witches. I'd be like, oh, there's some I forgot about. But like, off the top of my head, I couldn't think of anything. So uh, this is the one time I'm going to go ahead and say you can open it up to any genre. So, uh, and keep it with movies though. Like, I fucking hate Charmed. I think Charmed is like the biggest fucking joke ever. Uh, I had an ex girlfriend who uh, I sucked off that show and I, I hate it. I thought it was just fucking ridiculous. Uh, I won't go on a Charmed rant, but. Uh, anyway, so top three witch movies. Now, for me, at number three, I'm going Witches of Eastwick. You can't beat Jack. I'm sorry, dude. Brilliant, dude. When he goes in that church and just has that giant rant about women, dude, I'm just like, that's fucking brilliant. Uh, for me, number two would be The Craft. Uh, you know, I, that, I guess it's kind of like a guilty pleasure movie. Because it is like a movie I, I would think that's more geared toward girls. I like it. I, I enjoy it. Uh, once again, it's definitely a guilty pleasure movie. I enjoy it, though. Good stuff. Uh, and my number one movie, and somehow this don't really feel like a guilty pleasure movie, although it probably should be. Uh, number one witch movie for me, Hocus Pocus. They fucking love that movie. Uh, who doesn't like Hocus Pocus? I want to know right now, who does not like Hocus Pocus? That's right. You, you can't. It's, it's brilliant. It's just great. So, yes, that's my top three witch movies. So, to answer the top three, you know, there's multiple ways to hit me up. You can, you know, video response, if you will. Uh, my uh, friends over on, the, my phantom friends over on Facebook, you can hit me up there. Uh, you can leave that comment right down below. Or you can hit me up over on moodfandom7 at gmail.com. So, there it is. And I'm sure there's probably other ways. I mean, you bump into me in the cemetery, you can let me know there. Whatever, you know. So, boom, there it is. All right, so let's just go ahead and uh, let's get into some news. Ah, uh, fucking news. I'm not going to lie, like, most of the shit on this news I got like, something to bitch about. When don't I, though, right? All right, so I guess word is, and nothing's set in stone, nothing's official. They're just saying the word right now is that Lionsgate is contemplating doing a Saul remake. Are you fucking kidding me? For real? We're doing a Saul remake? It, it, the franchise isn't even that old. The first one's not even that old. Like when, The first one's like 04, I think. I think I even did a show on it and I'm blanking on the year. I think it's 04. It's not even a full 10 years yet. Jesus fucking Christ, guys. Remake, reboots. It, it amounts to the same fucking thing, alright? Uh, you know... I, they, they ended 7 in a way you can carry it on. You can fucking carry the story on. And I know everybody, like, I, I think people are just afraid to go back and do, like, a Friday 13 thing when there is, like, 10 plus sequels. I get it, alright? I get it. Who gives a shit, alright? Especially for, like, Saul, because they're all the same. And you won't, you won't remake it. So, it's, what, it's gonna be the same thing? Like, I don't know. I, I really, I, I don't want to see a fucking remake. I'm sick of remakes. God damn it. All the money they got in Hollywood, and they can't get a couple, you know, fuckers in there to actually write a good script. Is, it, is that the problem? I don't know. I don't know. I'm tore up. Angry already. Already angry. Show's not even halfway through yet. So, yeah, Saw remake. Come to a theater meeting. You know, I'll check it out. I check out some of these remakes. I haven't seen a lot of them. Some of them just like bitter and just angry. I'm like, yeah, I ain't gonna fucking watch it. That's the voice I use whenever I, you know, disagree with a remake. Eh. However, I don't know. I just, I'd really hate to see a remake. I think Seven, it wasn't the greatest at all, but it did have a pretty decent ending. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I thought it'd go on. I figured like it would, by now there'd be a part eight. And they're like, man, we're getting close to that double digit. We don't want to have 10 movies. Man, man. And, you know, at this point, I don't even care. It's fucking send Jake's all the space, all right? Who gives a shit? I mean, come on. Fucking ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. So, read a little article yesterday. Not yesterday, just a couple days ago. Uh, basically, uh, there's going to be another Hellraiser comic book coming out. Which is not new, because there's been, you know, there's, I think there's two or three different uh, Hellraiser series out there right now. But this one's actually written by Clive Barker. And I'm, and I, don't, I mean, maybe that's nothing new. I don't know. I haven't really looked at any of the Hellraiser comics. So I don't know if maybe the other ones were or not. Not the point. Uh, he's doing it. He's doing like his sequel, if you will, to the first Hellraiser. So like this comic book series that's coming out, it's going to be basically Hellraiser Two. You know, Hellbound, Hellraiser Two, whatever you call it. Uh, and what pissed me off about that is, I'm like, why don't you just make the fucking movie? Now, granted, there's a thing, you know. 
it's been a long time. I get that. You know, it's shit. Over, you know, close to 20 years, almost 20 years. Uh, no, it is over 20 years, isn't it? Ah, fuck it. Anyways, uh, point is, you know, I get it, you know, uh, Ashley Lawrence, is that her name? Yeah, a lot older now, so, you know, I can understand. I'm like, you know, at this point, when you get that big of a gap, I'm okay with recasting, all right? Still get Doug Bradley to be Pinhead. I still want him. I want him. I want the rest of Cenobites to be who they are, because that's fucking prosthetics, and that's okay. But, yeah, you want to recast a new girl, I'm okay with that. You'll probably get some people bitching, but, you know, fuck them. I would much rather see a Hellraiser 2 remake than just the comic book, because I don't give a fuck about the comic book that much. Like, I read some comics, don't get me wrong. I won't piss off the comic fans out there. I'm just saying, if I had a choice between... That's like if they did, like, a Phantasm 5 comic, and they're like, well, we're going to make a comic and not make the movie. Well, then, really? Fuck that. So, yeah, that's just me. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, like, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash. Great comic. Would have been an awesome fucking movie. And they shafted us on that. So, yes, thank you, whoever made the call on that one. Would have been an awesome movie. But people would have bitched because that's what people do. Like me. Like, I, I don't know. I, it's a double standard. I'm a hypocrite. Like, I'll bitch about other people bitching. And then I'll bitch about something else later. Uh, like this next news article right here. Uh, apparently, they're going to make another. Another. Uh, MDville found footage movie. Uh, yes. Uh, apparently, I guess there's even another one out there. Like, okay, as we speak, there's one that's either wrapping up production or whatever. And it's the official Amityville horror. Like, apparently, Amityville horror is like a trademark, registered trademark thing. So, that's the official, like, sequel or spinoff or, you know, whatever. It's with the other Amityville movies. But apparently, there, there's another one called, like, the Amityville Tapes, I think. Which is a found footage movie that's already been out for like a year or so. But this is going to be another one. And it's going to be, I think it's written and maybe even directed by it. And don't quote me on this one. Because the article was just kind of jumping around. And I'm like, I was like lost in the article. I was like, yeah, fuck this. This ain't even that interesting of a story, but fuck it. Uh, the, okay, after the uh, family moves out, uh, the Lutzes, uh, they, you know, they had a group in there. Now, I remember reading or hearing on one of the uh, DVDs. I don't know if you, I can't remember the commentary or if it was the actual, like, a bonus feature. It would be a special feature. But uh, there was, uh, basically, like, after they left and they claimed the house is haunted and, like, everybody showed up there, there was one seance. Now, there was many seances that's been held in the house. But I guess there was, like, one where, like, the cameras were off for whatever reason or the tape recorder was off. And that's when some weird shit happened. Like, it happened off camera, naturally. A million times they go in there with the cameras and it's okay. The one time they turn the camera off, shit happens. And so they're wanting to make... The movie based on that. Like, take that premise and then stretch that out. And I'm wrong. I mean, I'm down with that. I mean, you guys, you know, you've seen my show before. I'm not against found footage. I'm against, like, three fucking movies doing the same fucking storyline. Apparently, they can't use Amityville horror, like, the title. And I forget the name they said they was going to use. But anyways, yeah, that's coming to you right there. So, they're wanting to do that. I think the other one is more about the DeFeos. I'm not sure how they're doing found. I guess you know, I guess you can have an old, you know, 35 millimeter camera or something like that. Or I don't know what they're doing. But anyways, yeah, that yeah. So there's like three different versions of this out there. So yeah, check check one of them out. You know, you like it. And finally, Eli Roth is opening the Goratorium over in Las Vegas. Apparently, it's going to be a year-round haunted house with other attractions to it as well. Uh, I saw a trailer. They had a trailer for the place. Now, they don't come out. I can't remember. I don't think they even come out and say that it's like an attraction. It looks like a TV show or a movie trailer. And, and it don't get me wrong. It was an awesome fucking trailer. Like, it literally shows, like, this dude walking to get a haircut. And as he's walking, he's walking through blood and shit. And there's, like, gore on the floor. And he sits down. And he looks over. And there's, like, one guy has his head, like, in a clamp. And his skull's being ripped open. It looks awesome. Like, it's not, like, cheesy. It looks pretty good. And then another guy's getting his head fucking hammered in. And then when it comes to him, he's just, like, take a little bit off the top. And I'm like, that's hilarious. And but it was, like, a trailer for this attraction. Apparently, I mean, from what I've read thus far, it's, like, a, there's going to be, like, a maze, a haunted maze. Uh, I guess you go exploring in, like, this haunted hotel. But it's, like, the thing that I like is it's year-round. And hopefully it does really good. I mean, I'm all for places like that. I, I, I'm the one that hates that... 
you know, when November rolls around, the haunted houses disappear. I hate that. I do love, you know, I'm a big fan of haunted houses and other stuff, horror conventions like that. So, you know, horror related stuff. So, it would be nice to, you know, to have a place that is open year round. That's in Las Vegas. I'm nowhere near fucking Las Vegas. But, you know, you ever go through Las Vegas, check it out. I'm definitely plugging it. So, there it is, the Eli Roth Goratorium. So, yes. Uh, apparently, he's been playing this for a long time and it's finally going to open up. So, yeah. All right, so uh, this week coming up, or I'm sorry, next week, this upcoming Friday. I always forget you guys, you know, I'm filming it like on Saturday, and then you guys are watching it like Monday or so, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, this upcoming week, uh, horror movie coming out, uh, The Awakening. And it's basically about this woman, I, it looks like it's set like in the 1800s, maybe early 1900s, uh, Maybe even earlier than that, I don't know. Anyways, uh, where her job is basically she debunks uh, myths about ghosts like that. And she goes to a house that is haunted and yada, yada, yada. I, you know, there's three movies coming out this month. I mentioned this a couple weeks back. Uh, the Awakening, The Apparition, and uh, The Possession. And none of them look that great. They all just look generic as shit. And this was no exception. Now, I've mentioned before when it comes to ghost slash possession movies, I usually hate them going in. And then I watch them, they usually turn out pretty good. Usually. Now, there are some that are shit throughout. But I, don't know, I can't get excited for it. Uh, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a limited release. So, I don't know. If it comes on video on demand, check it out. You know, I mean, I don't know. So that's that, that's the awakening. So yes. So let's get to some viewer comments. Now I had a guy named uh, Bill Power hit me up and uh, he had a question a few weeks back. We're going back a little bit, not too far, about a month or so. Uh, yes, my, my buddy El Blanto is here. We did the uh, summer uh, horror villain summer showdown. That weird title that I just can't seem to ever get. Anyways, uh, he was asking where you know he got the uh, Michael Myers mask, and uh, actually it was from a, I want to say I picked it up, there's a store in, uh, cause I'm not sure where you're from, but uh, there's a store uh, in Bloomington, Indiana, uh, it was called Halloween USA, it's just seasonal, kind of opens up usually in uh, September or so, and uh, yeah, I always go over there November 1st because that's when like all the masks are like slashed down to, you know, whatever. And uh, yeah, I picked up pretty cheap there, so uh, I'm sure, you know, that's, that's that's my plan. So if you live near a costume store, especially, you know, like our Halloween store that sells a lot of shit, or even like, you know, your local Walmart or something like that. Uh, I just got lucky with that mask right there. I thought it looked really good. Like normally, I think Michael Myers' uh, mask is like the uh, worst mask to try to get. Cause I see like every time I see a mask, it looks fake as shit. Like it never quite look as good as they do in the movie. They just come off. I mean, like, you know, Freddy Krueger, I can understand because, you know, at least, he, like, in the movies, prosthetic makeup and latex like that. And, of course, it's hard to get the mask to match it. But, like, you know, the, the Myers mask is a mask. Like, it's a fucking mask. It shouldn't be that hard to get a good one, but they always look fucking horrible. And that one I thought looked really good. It's from the Halloween 2, the Rob Zombie Halloween 2. Uh, clearly, you guys, you know, probably knew that already. But, yeah, so, yeah, Halloween USA, that's where I picked it up at. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. Thank you for the question. Uh, and then, yeah, I mentioned him earlier, uh, 13th Wolfman, uh, he made a comment that uh, a couple weeks ago I did uh, a review on the cube, which he really liked, and then uh, he threw uh, the comment in there that uh, all their names are uh, actually based on prisons. And uh, I did know this, but it's one of those things where, like, I'm really bad about remembering what to say when I'm in front of the camera. Like, I'm, I got all up here, and I'm just like, oh, this little fact, and this, you know, tidbit, and this little thing. And I get in front of the camera, and I just go off on a rant that's completely different than what I was going to say, and then usually shit gets left out. So, yes, you are correct, and yeah, I, uh, that's one of those things I was going to talk about, and then I just kind of didn't. So, yes, but thank you, yes, that's, that is that. And then uh, finally, uh, and if I do, I'm gonna butcher your name. I know I will, and I do apologize. Uh, there's a guy out there. His name is uh, A Navarro, 1988. Once again, if I'm butchering it, I am sorry. I am just, I'm good at that. I will butcher any name. Uh, anyways, he invited me to uh, join uh, his Facebook group, uh, Horror Freaks United. And uh, thank you again. I do want to appreciate you. Really appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, yes on there I'm actually meeting a lot of other people you know who are in the YouTube horror community so honor thank you very much thank you again so boom 
Well, he's going to get some reviews. I mean, that's what we're here for, the reviews, all right? So let's do this. All right, up first, 1999, we got Audition. Uh, basically, there's a man who uh, lost his wife, and, you know, years later, his son is even urging him he should get back out there in the dating world. And he does with some fucked up consequences. All right, this is a movie that, and okay, I'm going to tell you right now, if you have not seen Audition, and if you've never even somehow heard of it, like somehow you've got, if you're watching this, and you just somehow was lucky enough to never have heard of Audition, skip ahead, like, 10 minutes or so. I don't know how long I'm going to run my mouth about this. But skip ahead, because I don't want to ruin this for you. Right now, just fucking fast forward. I've heard about this a long time ago, and everybody knows what you heard about. The ones who know this movie, they all know what scene, or, you know, everybody's talking about it. The fucking scene. So, I knew ahead of time, like, this shit gets crazy. Now, it's been, I don't know, six years, maybe, I, I was watching this, and I, uh, I, I stumbled across it on an IFC. And as I'm sitting there, I'm like, holy shit, it's that audition movie, you know? At the time, I didn't really know who Takashi uh, Mike is, Mike. I'm, I'm saying Mike. I know it's probably Mike, but I just spent so many years saying Takashi Mike. Now I'm going to keep saying Takashi Mike because, once again, I'm a prick and, yeah. So, yeah, uh, anyways, uh, saw it. I'm like, all right, let's check this out. And I was just so, I uh, thrown off by the fact, like, the first hour, and I'm exaggerating, it's probably like a half hour, 45 minutes. But, anyways, like, nothing happened. Now, I was like, Alien, nothing happens. We're like, that's kind of building. I mean, no, this is literally nothing. Like, it, it looks like a made for, like, lifetime fucking drama. Now, that's not a slam. Don't take this, you know, the wrong way. I know, like, my, I got that sarcastic tone in my voice always where you just never tell if I'm being serious or what, you know, whatnot. But no, I just remember watching things like, well, I know something's going to happen. Like, I've heard everybody talk about this, you know, fucking scene. So I stuck it out. Like, I'm, I'm rarely the guy who'll walk. I, I sat through some shit before. Uh, I used to work at a movie theater. And, you know, you're... You got a late movie playing. You're just waiting for people to, you know, get out. So I would just go to another theater and, like, throw something else in. Like, whatever was playing. And I'd seen some shit. And I just, I'd finish it up because I'm like, well, fuck it. I already started it. Like, I seen, like, The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants Part 2. Fucking horrible fucking movie. It's ridiculous. And I sat through every bit of it. Like, the whole time. I mean, I'd get up every now and get, you know, go steal some candy and eat some candy. But still, I put up with this shit. I was like, ugh. Fuck. So yeah, I've seen some you know shit, and I refuse to give up. And uh, yes, that way that scene happens. I don't care what anybody says. Cause I've read a million reviews, and everybody just seems very split on this movie. Either they love it or they hate it. And the ones that hate it, they're either split into two different groups. Cause the people who hate it are either like hardcore artsy movie dudes, and they're like, I love the movie until the end when they just go crazy. And I fucking hate it. And then the other ones are just like horror gore get hounds, and they're just like. Dude, the first hour or so are just boring as shit. And then we get to the end, and I love it. And then, you know, it's back to, you know. So, I just know like everybody is split on this thing. All right. I got to say right now, I fucking love this movie. I think it is just, it's, dude, it's close to a fucking masterpiece. Uh, the first time I watched it, I'll be honest with you, the ending was throwing me off. Like, when it gets to the, and once again, spoiler alert, so, I mean, you guys should... You know, I've told you this before, you should have already skipped ahead. Uh, you know, there, you know what I'm talking about. There's this scene where it, just, it gets a little chaotic. And I mean, I've watched, I've been watching a lot of Japanese films, especially a lot of Takashi Mike films. And, like, now I'm kind of getting a better grasp on these movies. Like, I know you just got to kind of, like, fucking wait it out and see how it ends, and then you can kind of piece it together. But time, I'm trying to follow it, and that's just, that's hard to do. And it was throwing me off. When I watched it this past week, it made a lot more sense. Like you kind of, you can put it in a you know structure kind of thing. Like you can kind of see where it's at and everything. Uh, yes, everything about this movie is is, is excellent. Uh, you know, some people be like the first you know hour or so is just boring as shit. I think it, it builds character big time. Uh, you really care about you know you care about, like when this guy gets fucked over at the end. You you care about him, but at the same time you kind of care about her fucking you over. You know. It's one of those things where, like, you know, you're so invested into the story and with these characters that, you know, I, it makes you, it's like I said about Alien. I mean, it literally is, I, I'm compared to Alien a lot in that sense that, like, you know, it's not like another slasher movie where it's just a bunch of nobodies come in. 
and they try to throw some backstory in there, like, you know, one scene where the girl's like, oh, when I was a kid, this, and then they heard and just kill off all her friends, and then she's left alone. No, I mean, it's literally, I mean, it's very rich with story and character development, and I thought that's, that's what's the main assets. Uh, but yes, I do think the ending is fucking nuts. And that's one thing everybody will say, too, is they're like, well, it's overhyped. I, I didn't see it. I'm like, fuck you, all right? If you're that jaded, then you know what? Ah, I got nothing. But yeah, fuck you. Uh, dude, it's nuts, dude. Uh, from the fucking... Dude, the thing that gets me every time is the fucking needles in the eye. Under the eye, I mean. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, you know, I, I watched it six years ago. And I was squirming, and then I watch it now, and I'm still squirming. My God, don't fuck with the eye. That's one thing in, in horror movies. I'll watch a dude get like butchered with an axe, doesn't bother me. Uh, eating alive, I don't give a shit. Dude, leave the eyes, ears, nose, and teeth alone. Don't fuck with them. And I don't mean like the outer ear, not like in the ear and up the nose, in the eyeball, and the teeth. Don't fuck. Just don't fuck with that shit. Oh my god, I'm literally, it's still, it was uneasy to watch. I'm like, oh my god. And yeah, I'm somehow still attracted to the chick that's doing it. Yeah, uh, that and one this call, same way. Like, both those girls, after the movie's over, I'm like, you know, knowing what I know now, I'd still date them. I'm just saying, throwing it out there. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, this movie is just, it's very surreal. Uh, and that's the thing, like, a lot of it is almost like it's taking place in a dream. Like, at that certain point, like, when they first bang, I know I'm talking about this really great RC movie, I'm going to use the term, like, bang, but, you know, fuck it. When they first bang, from there on, it's almost a dream slash premonition of what could happen, or maybe a possible reality, and it gets a little crazy from there on out, but, uh, it kind of reminded me a lot of David Lynch. Like, it was very, like, Lynchian, if that's even a word. Uh, yes, I mean... And everything about it, this is how bizarre it was. And even like, uh, and one scene for sure, and I, I, I looked on IMDb, like I was like IMDb in this thing hardcore, just reading what everybody else thought, uh, other reviews, the, you know, the truth, everything. And there's this, I, I can't think they would actually like compare the two. Like, there's a section on IMDb, is like movie connections. And just like the strangest weird things are like, well, that's clearly a connection here. They didn't mention this at all. There's a scene where the screen's actually tinted blue and when the girl, she's like this, right? And the guy's coming close to her, and he's going to burn her right there. And it reminded me so much of Blue Velvet. I'm like, how did they, and he, like, it's tinted blue. And the fact that the whole thing's very Lynch looking anyways, I was like, is that kind of a connection? And apparently not. At least IMDb don't think so. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's really, I mean, I don't want to, it's, it's one of those movies that's just so perfect that I don't really want to say too much, even though I am kind of giving some shit away. I just think it's brilliant. I cannot say anything, you know, more highly about it. I mean, everything about it. I like the acting's great. Uh, you know, just the fact, like, it's creepy how, like, it kept going back. Like, like the dude's living his life. Like, I'm all over the place. But obviously, if you're watching it now, you've seen the movie, so you can kind of follow. Like, when the guy, like, decides to call her up, leading up to that point, where she's just sitting there waiting by that phone, like, day after day, that shit's creepy as shit. Like, I'm like, oh my god. Ah, I was, yeah, I don't know what else to say. The movie is just fucking brilliant. And I, I like One Miss Call as well. Now, I didn't quite go into my research on One Miss Call like I did Audition. I think it's a superb follow up, or I don't know how close they was make together, but you know, a great movie, you know, to you know, follow your career with. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kashi Mike and horror, uh, dude knows what he's fucking doing. That's all there is to it. Uh, now I don't think, now he kind of does more, like, I, I know he does, like, a lot of, like, uh, gangster or y Yakuza, you know, type films, uh, crime, crime movies, uh, action. Of course, he kind of mixes genres a lot, but I don't know if he does a whole lot of, like, straight up horror movies, and, I mean, if he does, I'm, I need to check him out. But, uh, yeah, audition. Uh, once again, if you know ahead of time that you're gonna get some goodness, hang out, just watch the movie, and, Appreciate like how great I mean the dude really crafted it perfectly. Uh yeah, I can't like I said can't say enough. Fucking brilliant, check it out. Audition. So yeah. Um, that's why it's one of those reviews I believe will pile a lot of shit out, but you know. Good stuff. Alright, up next, we're gonna travel back. Twenty two years, nineteen seventy seven, Superior. Uh Dario Argento. And basically it's about a, a ballerina. No. She's a ballet dancer. Is that that's ballerina, right? A dancer goes to uh, this uh, 
dance school academy over in, I think they're over in uh, Rome. Uh, yeah, and finds out that the academy is ran by witches. Watch this uh, for the first time three years ago, maybe, and just did not care for it. Just wasn't big on it at all. And as you guys know, when I watch the second time, I usually bump it up a little bit more. Be honest with you, I'm still not huge on this. Now, earlier on, I won't say far, it's the beginning of last month, about a month ago, I did a review on Phantasm, where I was, you know, talking about how, like, you know, the plot's kind of, you know, it's crazy and convoluted, and how everybody hates it because of that, and I, I, I stick up for it. And the same could be said about Superior, and I think it's just going to come down to the fact that, like, I grew up watching Phantasm, whereas with Superior, I didn't. And that's where I, and I noticed that too, the reviews for this, especially user reviews, were the exact same as they were for Phantasm, whereas like the older people who grew up with it were like, oh, it's fucking, this is, you know, masterpiece. And then you, the younger people who are watching it for the first time now are expecting it to be just top notch and it, they're disappointed by it. And I hate to say, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably in that category. Uh, now it had some, you know, good, now once again, like David Lynch, D uh, Dario Argento is, He's an artist when it comes to you know film. I mean, he wants to use everything from you know the colors to the sound to really and, and really he kind of puts the story secondary. Like to him, it's more showing the art than actually telling the story. And for that, I mean, I can definitely respect it. I mean, I can respect that aspect of it because it does look great. I love the use of color. It's very bright. Uh, a lot of you know reds and purples and blues. I mean, it's just very you know it's very it is artsy looking. And of course, the murders are the same way. Like you know, there ain't a whole lot in this movie. But when there are some murders, they look incredible. And it is done like in an artsy way. Like, you know how brutal it is, there's this underlying beauty to it. And I will give him that. I mean, in fact, uh, the first kill, or double kill, if you will, of the movie, I thought was incredible. Like, and there are, there are some highlights in this movie. Uh, when the girl who's being chased, and eventually falls in barbed wire, I think her name was Sarah. Uh, I thought that whole you know, sequence was great. Including the music. Now, I didn't care for the music. I'm definitely out of place here. Fucking hang with me. Uh, everybody blows the goblins. They're like, oh. I, I, I'll say, like, starting off, I thought the music was just atrocious. It was a joke. It grows on you. And especially that sequence when they're chasing Sarah, or she's being chased by, I guess, a force, I guess. I, I like, like, you hear, like, in the background, they're like, witch, witch, you know, as the music's playing. And it, it, it was very effective. I thought it was very, you know, well done. Uh, it had Jessica Harper in it. Uh, I'm not saying she's a great actress by any means. I like her. Like, you know, I liked her in uh, Phantom of the Paradise. Uh, even more obscure, I liked her in Big Man on Campus, even though she's kind of a cunt in that movie. Uh, I just like her. I think she just has a, a really nice presence to her. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I liked her, but once again, I just felt like, you know, you probably could have got a better actress to, you know, pull through. I mean, you know, like the script's kind of. And the fact that, I mean, now once again, I'm kind of, I prefer to read the subtitles than to hear dubbing. So, you know, that's why I'm, I, I would prefer that. However, I can do dubbing. It's not a big deal. Like, I'm not the guy who's just like, oh, the words ain't matching their mouth. And I just, oh, this is, you know, so I don't judge it on that. Like, I watch a lot of, like, old kung fu movies where it's just dubbed. And it's, it's comical, you know, comically dubbed. But at the same time, I'm not, it's not, like, I'm not, like, just so distracted by the dubbing. Now I'm just like, I hate this movie. No, no, not like that. So, the dubbing's pretty bad in this one. I kind of wish I would have, you know, put stuff. I, I think on the DVD I had, I could, have cut, I could have put subtitles on there, but I just didn't. I was like, I I'm lazy. I'm just like, I'll hit play, and whatever I get, I'll take, you know, so. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I, I, that's kind of the, 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 the pro. They had uh, Udo Kerr. I don't know if I'm being pronouncing his name right. Uh, small part, but I love him, dude. Like, everything I've seen him in, I just, I think he's great. Uh, cons? Oh, my God, where to go? Uh, okay, for one... One thing I kind of, uh, I didn't care for, it was the fact that, like, she comes in here and she just kind of already has a bad vibe about the place. I'm like, really? Really? Just roll with it. And I'm like, it's, it's a bunch of witches. You're a chick. Try to get in with them. Like, I love movies. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I don't know. This is one of those movies that I just feel like if you just, like, hang with them, you will have a better outcome than going against them. That's all I'm saying. Now, I have not seen, uh, it, it, I think it spawned two sequels, uh, Inferno, or sort of sequels, Inferno and uh, Mother of Tears. I actually own Mother of Tears, found it at Big Lots for like two bucks. Uh, haven't watched it yet. Uh, I feel like I need to go watch Inferno first, even though I, I hear like there's not really like as a 
big connection between the three, and they're not like, you know, any kind of continuity, you know, but you know what I'm saying. Anyways, uh, I hadn't seen Inferno, but I'm like, you know, at the end of the movie, she just like lights them all on fire, like, hopefully, or she didn't light them on fire, but the place, you know, goes up in flames. I'm like, you know, it just ends with her escaping, and it's like, you're, you know, you, you were watching, you know, Superior, but I'm like, you know, after the credits are done rolling, you know, she's just gonna leave. Can they not just like fucking witch her shit out? Like right there, like as soon as she's like walking, like, well, that's over, woo. And like lightning hits her or fucking a tree falls on her or something like that. I mean, they're, they're burning a lot, but they can still feel like, ah, chanting this shit and cast a spell and then it happens. I don't know. Uh, the abrupt ending was another thing I didn't like. It felt like it was like a build up and then just nothing. It just, I heard it. Everybody catches fire. She's outside, roll credits. And I was like, uh, it just felt very, very rushed. Now, I think I, I mentioned this. I can't remember. I you know back when I did a the Beyond and, and slash, aka Seven Doors of Death, talking about how like a lot of the uh, Audible Butcher's name Giallo, Giallo, whatever, the Italian horror movie kind of things. Uh, you know, a lot of those were like you know with our slashers, like how like a lot of people say like you know our slashers have like no plot. It's just kill scene. You know. Just multiple kill scenes linked by like a thin plot, and I said you know a lot of the you know Italian movies were like that, and this one is no exception. Except I just feel like there wasn't enough kill scenes. Like there's only like three or four in this whole movie, and I'm just like, and only two of them were like really good. The last scene ain't bad. Like it ain't quite a kill scene per se. I mean it's not a victim scene. Like, she kills the invisible witch, and I'm not gonna knock the you know shitty looking graphic of like the outline of her. I'm okay with that. Now, the, when the when Sarah comes back from the dead and comes in with the knife, dude, she looked kind of creepy right there. I won't, I won't deny that. Uh, but, you know, segue into what I thought was like one of the worst death scenes was when the dog attacks the blind guy. Now, the reason why, now this was done before Seven Doors of Death, but I thought their dog scene was a million times better. Like, this one was just like, the guy was staring, like, at least in the Seven Doors of Death, you know, the girl who is also blind has her seen eye dog there, and she can't see, but she's crouched down. And the dog's right here. And she's just like, oh, we're okay. And it fucking gets her. And this one, the dude's standing. Like, I'm going to get out of frame for a second. He's up here. Dog's down here, and somehow, like, it is like, and this looks cheap as shit. I'm like, at least, like, having tackling first, and then bite. No, he literally gets close to the throat first. And it just, it looks horrible. So I didn't, I didn't care for that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Overall, I didn't care for this movie. Now, I'm saying that there is some good in it, and I'm not going to be like, you know, I shouldn't get classic. No, it has classic status. I'm not taking classic status away from it. I mean, I, I'm sure if I grew up watching it, I'd be fucking stroking it and then sucking it off because, you know, it's brilliant. However, I did come in late on it, and I personally just don't care for it. But, uh, no, I definitely check it out. I mean, I'm, you know, it's popular for a reason. So, yeah, that's that. So, well, God, I think I'm done. I think I pretty much hit all. So I'm saying audition, fucking awesome. Superior, not so much. So yeah, uh, Moo Phantom, I'm out. Check you later.